Boston home. Our opening hymn is number 352, Come Holy Ghost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, gathered together on this Pentecost vigil to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, we thank the Lord for his gift of the Spirit, which guides us and inspires us as we go out to the world to, the world to proclaim the good news. Indeed, the, the gospel is proclaimed in so many varied tongues throughout our world, and especially by our folks that are engaged in missionary activity in the world. And so we pray in a very particular way for those that are engaged in that activity and, and bring the gospel to the furthest reaches of the world. Today we also, uh, as we celebrate, uh, pray for those uh, two men who are, who are sat atop a rocket here not just an, less than an hour ago uh, down in Cape Canaveral. Uh, it is exciting that we have launches going up from Florida once again, uh, carrying people up to the International Space Station. And so for astronaut uh, Doug Hurley and, and Robert um, uh, Beekler, we, we pray for them. We ask the Lord to guide them uh, as they make this journey into space to the furthest reaches for discovery and for service of our country, and so we pray for them as well. As we begin our celebration, let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. For you alone are the whole 
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who willed the Paschal mystery to be encompassed as a sign in 50 days, grant that from out of the scattered nations the confusion of many tongues may be gathered by heavenly grace into one great confession of your name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to, compl- to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, Are not all of these people who are speaking Galatians? Then how does each one of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phyria, and Pamphylia. Egypt's and the district of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As the body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, through many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On that evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so now I send you. Indeed, we are called to be these peace bearers in the world. And to be honest, I had a totally different direction. I was actually planning on going with my homily this weekend until some of the events of this past week unfolded. And as we watch, and if you've ever watched the news, uh, we see the horror that's been happening up in Minneapolis and, and Minnesota and, and the violence that has erupted. This case of, of the, the uh, death of George Floyd and the struggle that has ensued thereafter, I think speaks boldly to a, a flaw in the human condition, another form of virus that infects us, that of racism, of hatred, of bigotry, of things that you know, we'd hope to have extinguished at this point, but yet still like a fire continue to rage out of control at times. I was thinking this past week, you know, just last year, I had gone with some priest friends on a little bit of a break. We went up to Minneapolis and fell in love with the city. It was really a great trip. And to see the violence that has erupted up there is heartbreaking. What happened to George Floyd should never have happened. And yes, the officer who perpetrated this should be held accountable and pay for what he has done. But the violence that has erupted and sadly the media coverage of this violence has overshadowed the voices of those who do stand in peaceful protest standing up for those that cannot speak standing up for an end to racism and profiling and violence and everything else that that entails now i know that many would say well father what do you know about being a black man and i have no idea what it is like to be a black man However, I have been blessed to know many men and women in the African American community who have been staunch voices against racism. In my own ministry and in my own service, I've been placed in, in, in circumstances and places that have allowed me to see with eyes clear what is happening. And yes, even to sometimes be on the receiving end of reverse racism. So I do have an idea of the struggle that we face. It was back in 2000 that Bishop Snyder had given me the permission as, as a seminarian to go up to Charleston, where Bishop Baker, one of our own priests who had become bishop, uh, was starting up a volunteer program. And a gentleman by the name of Bill Iglesias was up there uh, to start this program. And I went up to help him. We were renovating an old rectory uh, in, in a certain rough area of town called America Street, and there was this little African American church, Catholic church that was there, and the old rectory we were renovating to make it our headquarters, and we were living there. And it was a challenge, to say the least. One, as kind of an example, I remember coming back from one of my apostolic ministries uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the old rectory, and I remember getting into a cab to take the cab back, and, and there was a very large African American man, you know, big, big guy, and he said, uh, where are you going? And I told him, America Street. 
And he turned around with eyes wide and says, boy, what are you doing down on America Street? I don't go there without my gun. I said, well, we're in ministry. We're starting a volunteer program. That summer had with it challenges and blessings that gave me a little bit more insight into the nature of what was going on in that community, the struggle with drugs and poverty and, and everything else and violence that was happening in that community. We had rocks thrown through the windows. We had things chanted at us. And we had to figure out how we were going to minister in this environment. Bishop Baker would come by and pick us up and we'd have dinner with him to kind of update him on everything that was going on. And such is the light of the Holy Spirit. I had an, an, an inspiration at one night. I said, there was a seminarian from the Diocese of Charleston that came to help us. And I said to him, I said, why don't we go out and buy a football and a basketball? He said, that's a good idea. So we went out and we bought a football and a basketball. And one late afternoon, we decided to go out in the street and just start throwing the football. And this was after we'd had the rock thrown through the window. And so we started throwing the football back and forth, and a couple of the neighborhood kids started coming by, and so I looked over and said, hey, kid, and I threw him the football, and he threw it back, and he says, what are y'all doing here? So we let him know we were with the church. We're doing volunteer ministry, and we're starting a volunteer mission uh, you know, to, to work and serve in the community. He said, oh, and we started talking with them a little bit more and started to hear some of their struggles and what they've been wrestling with. And what we had found out is that so many people were coming into this area and starting to buy these old Charlestonian homes, and there was a gentrification that was going on, and these people were being pushed out of this community. And they were a bit, you know, re regretful of it, and so they here they see us what, moving in into this community, and they're like, what are these guys doing here? You know, we're just getting pushed further and further out. But by that dialogue, all the other struggles ceased. By a simple act of dialogue, of sitting down with one another in an opportunity to share. Violence begets violence. And so this weekend, really, we deal with a story of two different types of fire. The fire that is burning now in Minnesota is a fire of hatred. There is no cause for violence and looting and burning down police precincts and burning down businesses. This stuff has no place in this dialogue because it serves no purpose but perpetuates violence and hatred and bigotry and racism and everything under the sun. There are those that are standing for peaceful protest. And in part of my ministry, when I was first made a pastor, I was at St. Pius Holy Rosary and Crucifixion here in downtown Jacksonville. Two of them, including one that was the Mother Church of African American Catholics in Jacksonville. I had the great blessing of meeting so many civil rights leaders in our community and serving with them and hearing their stories, meeting men like Alton Yates, so, you know, who you've probably seen in the paper from time to time, uh, who was a parishioner of mine at Holy Rosary, a wonderful man, a man who served his country faithfully as a test pilot in the, in the military and came home and couldn't sit at the counter space at Woolworths and was part of that sit-in that led to Axe Handle Saturday. This reality and hearing these stories really helped unfold for me this reality that we face in, in the world about where dialogue can be flawed and fail, where peaceful protest needs to take precedence in our world. And yes, it sometimes can be met with violence, and that's okay. But we must always be a voice for the struggling and for the needy. You know, it's kind of funny. I remember when I'd gone up to uh, St. Pius and Holy Rose of Crucifixion. Now, we were living at St. Pius, which was a stone's throw from Moncrief and that area, and we had a lot of struggle over there with drugs and violence. And I remember Bishop Baker coming back for the funeral of, of Father Dennis O'Regan. And I ran into him, and, and, he's, <laughs> and he was so funny, and I, I think I may have mentioned this before, but he, he came up to me, he says, how's it going on the north side? I said, I said, it's going really well, actually. I said, they're beautiful communities. And he says, you know I prepared you for this ministry. I said, yes, Bishop, I know. I said, the Holy Spirit helped prepare me for this ministry through you. So I'm grateful. I am grateful. But it has given us, I think, an opportunity to reflect upon what fire burns within our own soul. Do we allow the fire of, of hatred, the fire of gossip, the fire of all these other things burn in our own soul that only leads to destruction? Or is it the fire of the Spirit 
that allows us to be renewed and strengthened. You see, fire really is a natural and necessary part of our ecosystem, right? It burns off all the brush, all the overgrowth, all the dead trees that have fallen down. And what happens after all this has been cleared out, but new life springs forth in the form of wildflowers and everything else under the sun. New life is brought from the ashes. In reality, that fire, seen fire is necessary for our souls. To allow the Lord to stir into flame the Holy Spirit within our hearts so that the fire of bigotry and hatred and all these other things can be burnt out. For the, the fire of anxiety and fear and worry and all those things that we clutter upon ourselves can be burned out so that new life can be brought forth. Yes, it may be painful and it may be a struggle for a while. But when we see that new life that's brought forth out of that fire, out of that letting all this stuff go that has no place within our hearts, that only takes up space and doesn't serve the purpose that our Lord has intended, then we start to see the beauty and the richness of what our Lord has in store for us. The difference between the fire that has been burning in the hearts of those that are going on in Minneapolis and the fire that, of the Holy Spirit are two things its source, and the desire for an outcome. Because the desire should always be about renewal. Fire and violence for violence's sake serves no purpose. Fire that burns and brings new life has a purpose of renewal and strength. The fire of hatred and bigotry and all these things and gossip and everything else comes from within, from the self. But the fire of the Spirit comes from God to light the world on fire. We heard our Lord speak to us so beautifully about the fire that's to come into the world. And he said, oh, how I wish this world was already burning. We are the ones called to go out and to light that fire by the light of the Spirit that has been ignited in our hearts. And we cannot do that if we keep piling all this junk on that fire that smothers that fire of, of the Holy Spirit. It is a scary thing to let that fire roar out of, out, out of control because we never know where the Spirit might lead. But if we do allow the Spirit to, to run its course and to burn out what does not belong to God, the renewal that our Lord can work not only in our lives but in our world is, will be the most profound thing we could ever imagine but we must let his fire burn in our hearts. I think often about one of my professors, Monsignor Steve Basso, and he probably won't like me mentioning his name in a homily, but that's okay. But I remember my very first scripture class with him. We sat in the, in the seats and he looked at us and says, gentlemen, I'm gonna tear down everything that you think you know about scripture and then we're going to build you back up again. In the same way, this is what our Lord does by His Spirit in our lives. He can tear down everything we think we know or everything we think we need so that we can be built back up again and be renewed in Him. So as we gather for this Eucharist, we pray for those that are suffering especially in Minneapolis, but throughout our country and throughout our world, those who suffer from bigotry and racism and hatred and violence, for these really have no part in the human heart. Let's ask our Lord to touch the hearts of those who enact this violence, that they may be converted and see the error of their ways and find ways in which to bridge that gap and to speak about these issues that desperately need to be spoken about so that we can find peace and reconciliation. And at the end of the day, let us ask our Lord to stir into flame the Holy Spirit that has been settled within our hearts. Now that, that beautiful uh, uh, song that we had just before the gospel, the sequence, Veni Sancti Spiritus, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. As we gather for this Eucharist, let us ask our Lord to not only enter into our lives in a very profound way, but give him the permission to light our hearts on fire and allow that fire to burn brightly, to take away all that stuff that is keeping us from following Christ with all our heart.
For when we do, not only will he renew us in our own lives, but he will renew the face of the world through us as his spirit guides us out into the world to proclaim his gospel. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we have confidence to present all our needs before the Lord. That the church, filled with the Spirit of Christ, may be ever renewed to proclaim the gospel throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill with the coronavirus, for all who care for them, and for the governments and people of the world, that we may experience the healing mercy of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the wisdom and strength of the Holy Spirit fill all entrusted with public office, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That we who have the Holy Spirit as our advocate may in turn be advocates for the vulnerable, the forgotten, and the unborn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may experience the presence of the healing power of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may be purified by the Spirit and share eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For own private and unspoken intentions and the intentions in an intercessory prayer book, along with the repose of the soul of Francis Pross, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, grant us the continuous help of your Holy Spirit as you answer our prayers Fill our lives with his great gifts of grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Pour out upon these gifts the blessing of your spirit, we pray, O Lord, so that through them your church may be imbued with such love that the truth of your saving mystery may shine forth for the whole world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, your, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Felipe, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May these gifts we have consumed benefit us, O Lord, that we may always be aflame with that same Spirit whom you wondrously poured out on the apostles through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for just a moment. Um, as I mentioned in my homily, you know, we have a lot of praying to do. We pray for those up in Minneapolis and those that are currently in the midst of this scourge. We pray for George's family um, who are suffering and, and you know, for, even for the officer who perpetrated all of this, you know, we pray for his family as well. This isn't an easy circumstance, but violence only begins with more violence. And we, we must continue to ask the Spirit to guide us in ways that are, are holy and pure and truly bring about true change. Um, and we must continue to be that voice of change. You know, our Lord sent us out in the world for a purpose, to bring his peace and his love. And so let's continue to be that voice of peace and of love in the world, uh, a love that knows all of humankind um, and, and loves them. Uh, so let's ask the Lord for grace and strength to do that today on this Pentecost Sunday, this birthday of the church, as we go forth to proclaim the gospel. Um, we are very blessed this summer that uh, Bishop Estevez has seen fit to send us a seminarian for a summer assignment. It'll be a very unique summer assignment. Um, usually we have plenty of things to keep them busy, so we're going to be creative with him. Uh, but I'd like to introduce Connor Dunnigan, who is one of our seminarians. Uh, he's, I'll let him kind of give you a little bit of his background. Uh, but Connor, we welcome to Assumption, and, and we'll let you say a little word of introduction. Well, thank you, Father Jason. Um, as Father Jason said, my name is Connor Dunnigan, and I'm a seminarian here for the Diocese of St. Augustine. And uh, this is going to be my summer assignment. Even though I didn't imagine, you know, you know this situation happening this summer, um, I'm originally from New Jersey. I grew up in Long Island, New York, um, and my family's been uh, moved to Pine Vedra about 10 years ago. So I'm happy to be here, and you know, happy to serve in the best uh, capacity possible during this, you know, crazy. Uh, time we live in today in this in this world. Thank you for having me, and uh, I'll be praying for you. If you guys can pray for me, thank you. So if you do lawn maintenance or anything like that needs to be done, we can send them your way. I'm sure. No, but we, we were so glad to have Connor with us over the summer. We do have ways in which we're going to keep him very busy, um, and so we're very grateful for that. Uh, Connor just graduated St. John Vianney College Seminary down in Miami, and he'll be beginning St. Vincent de Paul Regional Seminary for his graduate studies uh, next year. So please pray for him in this year of transition. Uh, but we also want to pray for our graduates of our own Assumption uh, grade school. Uh, we were very blessed. Bishop Kenny was very generous in allowing us to have our commencement ceremony out on the field there on the river uh, on Bishop Kenny's property. Uh, and it turned out to be a magnificent morning, a great commencement uh, as we sent our young people on to uh, bigger and better things and on to high school. So we pray for all of them and, and congratulate them on their graduation and pray for them as they begin this new phase in their life. And we pray in a very special way that the Lord may send his spirit deep within their hearts to guide them as they continue to grow in love of the Lord and grow in knowledge and wisdom. So please pray for our graduates and, and congratulate them if you get a chance to see them. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth the masses and it, hallelujah, hallelujah.